One of the most important things that a GIS steering team is, to, is, is really the communication of targets to the directional driller. The directional driller is the guy on the ground that's making everything happen. So it's really important to, um, to understand that a directional driller can make or break a project. So it's really the main thing to remember when talking to a directional driller is that you have to ask him to do only things that he can do, possibly do. That, uh, because if you ask him to do something impossible, he won't listen to anything else you say. Directional drillers like numbers. Uh, so it's important to really remember to make everything analytic and uh, numerical. When you're communicating uh, to a directional driller, you first have to make sure everything you ask him to do is possible. You have to make it really simple so that there's not any confusion in how the target is uh, uh, presented. It has to be quantifiable because the directional drillers like numbers. They like using their calculator and taking a tangent and using those numbers to keep the wellbore in, in track. And it has to be based on geologic and engineering data. It just can't be a hunch. You can't just say, oh, let's, uh, I think it uh, needs to go up or I think it needs to go down. There are certain ways that you can steer a horizontal well. The first uh, target technique, I would say, uh, is go with the plan. Follow the plan regardless of the geology. Not always the best way to go. Uh, plan always changes or, uh, once you've enacted it. Uh, you get a false sense of security uh, when you are close to your plan. You may, however, not be in the geology. So it's really important to understand that no plan survives first contact with the formation. Uh, so the second technique is the pan what I, my favorite, which I call the panic technique, which is go up, go down. We're not sure where we are, so let's try something. Um, it's an emotionally based response, generally not based on anything quantifiable. The, uh, it causes you to make unnecessary trajectory changes, which will jeopardize the whole eventually. There's no stratigraphic content and so it's not based on any geological or engineering information and it's very confusing to directional drillers and frustrating to company men and everyone else on the well site because you're continually going up and down searching for something that you're not sure what that is even. The next method, which is really probably the most commonly used method for steering a horizontal well, is called the point in space method where you're telling the directional driller to hit a certain depth at a certain point in the well bore. In this particular case, the directional driller will hit that target, but you don't necessarily have control over the inclination of the well bore necessarily of when they hit that target out in front, and it will cause overshooting of the target. Overshooting correcting will cause you to lose the hole in some instances, one thing you'll notice if you look at how these three targets line up, they could have been drilled on a straight line. All those targets could have been drilled connecting the dots. It really, and the other problem is that this creates a lot more work for the geosteering team. Um, so the preferred method is what I call the vector targeting method, where you land on a line at a inc certain inclination with certain tolerances. It's important to use this so that you can create smooth transition tar between target lines. It gives a directional driller flexibility to use his knowledge and skill to land on a target. It's the only method that really contains stratigraphic content and it's simple and less confusing to a directional driller. Uh, in this particular case, we have target one, we keep on, uh, which is a line based at, from zero vertical section onward, and the directional driller is able to calculate TVD anywhere along that target line. If the geology changes, a new target line is given. So then the directional driller is able to plan how he's going to drop angle, build angle back to land on the target. 
Here's an example of a well drilled utilizing this method. The black dashed line is the target line. Uh, the, you can see the formation, the well bore in black and the formation target is in dashed red, between the dashed red lines. As the well drills around the curve, we have a target line. We drill down toward that target line. The well lands on the target line, and as we land on the target line, we're at the base of the target, and so the trajectory of that target line changes and st steepens to account for the uh, unexpected formation dips. The well bore follows this target line until we near the top of the target, and so then the target line is changed again to steer the horizontal well back down to make sure that it stays within the target interval. The well was then drilled to the end of the well. So this 4,000 foot lateral was drilled with only three target changes. This simplifies the whole procedure of drilling a horizontal well and makes it easier to communicate with a, a directional driller. The conclusions are is that they're really so primary data that's really needed for a horizontal well is to know the position in this, uh, of the bit in space uh, so that we can know where the well bore is at any time below the surface. We need to know where the well is within the rock unit that we're drilling. And we need to know what the accurate dip is so that we can adjust the trajectory to land and stay within our target. It's also really important to be able to identify those small faults that are maybe below the resolution of seismic, but may affect the drilling of the well. There's really, and remember, there's the four things that we really need to do to make sure we're successful drilling a horizontal well. It's important to know that an average dip is a statistical anomaly. You can believe it over a distance of four or 5,000 feet, but those very detailed changes in, in formation dip may vary four to six degrees above or below that average dip. It's always important to make sure that your preconceptions don't cause you to make incorrect decisions. And it's always really important to make sure you have all the information before you act. And the fourth thing is always drill on a line don't drill to a point. Make sure that you have all the in information to your directional driller in a quantifiable uh, method. And make sure that you follow that line until the geology changes. And only then do you need to make a target change. Thank you very much.